flashback. Thanks for watching and I hope that there will be more videos after this one. Hello. First of all, I'd like to make a sincere apology for not uploading any videos in the past three months or so. Well, reasons are that I had gotten caught up with school and stuff, so yeah. I am technically still busy with school and stuff, but whatever. Literature and chemistry can wait. My very last video was an iPad review, and it has become the most popular video on my channel. So I figured that it would make a perfect expense to splurge some money on another iPad so that I can do another review on and use it myself. However, due to some misfortunate incidents, that video was never made. More information on that at the end of the video. Introducing the 2019 Apple iPad Mini, also known as the 5th generation iPad Mini. This is a very predecessor of the latest iPad mini that Apple currently sells and you can acquire this little guy for around $200 on the used market for the base 64GB Wi-Fi variation. In my case, I got this unit in a very bad cosmetic condition for roughly $120. More information on that later too. In this video, I will be going through the pros and cons of this 5 years old slab of glass in 2024 and why you should also buy it. This is the last iPad mini with the old rounded design and a lining port before they refreshed it in 2021. This design has stuck with iPads from 2014 to 2022. As a matter of fact, the first iPad with this roundy metal design was in my last video. You can watch that after this one if you haven't. And believe it or not, Apple is still selling the 9th gen iPad with the same design but bigger. More specifically, the iPad mini 5 shares the same footprint and dimensions with the iPad mini 4, making cases and accessories cross-compatible. On the back, we have a rear-facing 8 megapixels camera, which does the job just fine for the course of scanning documents, a classic polished Apple logo, and the iPad inscription. There is no LED flash as it remains to be an iPad Pro exclusive. Button placement is very much the same as all previous iPads with a dual mic array on the top and the back of the top side. Oh, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. What a rare sight. The bottom lies the lining port with USB 2.0 in between a set of stereo speakers. They produce an above average audio quality for their minuscule size, which is good. As I have complained on my last iPad review, it really makes no sense to put two speakers right next to each other. This is extra accurate on this Mini 5 as the volume is not really high either. One bonus thing is that there is Dolby Atmos support in Apple Music. On the front, we have a mediocre 7MP front-facing camera, which is fine and better than the 8th gen iPad in this price range, a traditional home button that is awkwardly off-center and sits on the chin. This home button is extremely underrated, as it packs the second generation Touch ID. Not a lot of people have noticed it, but apart from being equipped by the iPhone 6s and later, this technology is also present on the 2017 iPad Pro, iPad Air 3, and this Mini 5. The scanning speed is super fast, smoking all the baseline iPads and it elevates user experience by a whole notch. The 2019 iPad mini packs a 7.9 inches Retina IPS LCD display at 1536 by 2048 pixels. The aspect ratio remains 3 by 4 which gives out annoying black borders when watching 16 by 9 videos. Obviously, being a mini product, it is fairly undersized for a productivity focused device. So I hardly found myself restricted by it. Had I got a complaint, it would be Apple's choice on setting the DPI so high, leaving status bar icons and home screen icons a little bit too condensed. And no, don't even get me started on the toggle to enlarge those icons. It makes them almost uncanny to look at. To Apple's credit, the laminated display once again destroyed the base iPad models. It leaves little glare and no annoying air gap between the Apple Pencil tip and the display panel. Speaking of which, this is the first iPad mini to support the Apple Pencil. This has helped giving the iPad mini a wide range of use cases from note taking to sketching, etc. Furthermore, its display is P3 color certified and it is true tone enabled, so you can take color grading tasks on this device for granted. Well, if you can't even get anything close to that to run on iPadOS. <coughs> 
This little dude is powered by the Apple A12 Bionic chip, a massive jump from the underpowered A8 chip on the Mini 4, along with 3GB of RAM and either 64 or 256GB of internal storage. The SoC has aged like fine wine, but it is still very capable of most of the basic tasks that the average user needs. Everything is liquid smooth and responsive. App opening time is also still quite fast. This iPad was released with iOS 12, and it is still getting software updates for the foreseeable future. Judging by the recent iPad software support records by Apple, it is very likely that the Mini 5 alongside with the Air 3 and 8th gen would get at least another 2 to 3 years of updates. This iPad is on iPad OS 17 with no essential features missing, including extra gimmicky ones like customizable lock screens, depth effects, continuity, etc. One thing worth mentioning is that the A12 runs pretty warm within this mini body. It is surely not as hot as the iPhone XS, but it is definitely noticeable when you have tasks run at background. Personally, I do not game a lot, but it performs well at my simple arcade games. At 88% of battery health, this iPad's battery is able to render 6 to 8 hours of screen on time, which is incredibly impressive. Moreover, it is fast charging enabled at 19 watts, taking only an hour and a half to fully charge from dead to full. Just like pretty much all iPad models, a keyboard and a mouse can be paired and basic productivity tasks can be done on the go. Accompanied by an Apple Pencil or a compatible third-party stylus, the sky's the limit for what you can do. Actually, maybe the small screen may be an issue. As previously mentioned, this iPad has very much all of the fancy extra continuity features such as sidecar and universal control. I am always blown away when I use wireless sidecar due to its sharpness and responsiveness. You can also use the Apple Pencil in Sidecar as a drawing tablet for your Mac if you wish. If you're concerned by the fact of whether the screen is too small for reading, fear no more because the 324 ppi pixel density allows text to appear incredibly sharp. Even those teeny manga panels are still comfortably legible. For under $200 for a 64GB Wi-Fi unit, this is an excellent tablet for students or people who are short on budget. Me. Admittedly, the smaller size of the iPad mini can only appeal to a niche demographic, but it is worth it for anything else that it brings to the table. If you do want a bigger display, I would highly recommend getting an iPad Air 3, which has the same specs but with a 10.5 inches display. An honorable contender is the 2017 iPad Pro 10.5 inch, which gives you a stunning 120Hz display. USB 3 and 4GB of RAM. On the other hand, due to the model's age, most displays have turned pink, and it is pretty much on the verge of official iPad OS support, albeit the A10X performance should be relevant to the A12, but without neural engine support, which is very important for essential iPad OS features nowadays, the model's EOL days are numbered. Well, I am totally happy with my purchase and I think that you will too. If you are seeking for a budget iPad like I was, regardless of whichever you're gonna get based on my recommendations. And thanks for watching. Story time. Back in November last year, I sold my iPad Air 2 and went on a hunt for a cheap iPad. I came across a 128GB MDM locked 8th generation iPad for $160. I got it and set everything up. However, after a month of use, right on New Year's Day, the display started to show its problems. Horizontal lines started appearing, obstructing the view of everything. Well, of course, I was utterly bugged by the scene, so I ordered an aftermarket display for it, only for it to turn out to be broken. Fortunately, I got a refund back, but I managed to break the touch panel's flex connect cable, which was another expense added on top. Eventually, I was sick of it, so I got a new touch glass, put it all together, and sold it on Facebook Marketplace as is for $80, which is coincidentally the same amount that I sold my Air 2 for. On a financial standpoint, fixing the 8th gen would have costed more than getting a different iPad, therefore I'm glad I took this route. Which route? Let me elaborate. So instead of paying obscene local sellers $250 for an iPad mini 5, I bought a smashed unit for $55 and an aftermarket display for only $65. Then I Frankensteined it all together and I got myself this little guy. Not only did I save a huge chunk of cash, I prevented this perfectly good iPad from becoming e-waste. One major criticism I have is that this Chinese display has pretty poor peak brightness and color reproduction. Plus, it did not come with the magnetic sensor flex cable for the smart cases. I had to desolder the original cable and solder it onto this panel. It wasn't hard for me, but it might be a roadblock in learning how to repair tech for some people. 
Oh, and this is very worth mentioning. Unlike the iPhone, True Tone is not serialized to the display, so you do not need to reprogram anything to get it back after a display replacement. One asterisk, Touch ID is and will always be paired between the home button flex cable and the SOC's SEP chip, so avoid ripping it during removal. Well, I was able to retain my Touch ID functionality, so... Good luck to you, I guess. And that wraps up my story. Thanks for sticking out to this section and see you in three months.